I'm Neil Patterson. Welcome to the Sky News Daily. Her what in the botch Photoshop is this? The photo and video of Kate Middleton is fake and even... You may have heard this theory that Kate's face in this photo is actually a direct ripoff off of a Vogue magazine cover. Conspiracy theorists out there thinking that this is in fact a body double. That is her walking, that it's not some AI generated thing, that is Princess Kate. I don't really care that these pictures are photoshopped. I just think it's interesting to see how they choose to portray themselves to the world. Those are but a handful of the tens of thousands of TikToks currently doing the rounds. Now, if you have absolutely no interest in the speculation and conspiracy theories about the Princess of Wales following her doctored Mother's Day photo, then you are certainly not alone. But the social media frenzy, it just isn't going away. Even though a video of William and Catherine, shot by a member of the public in Windsor, has been published by the Sun newspaper, still people are suggesting that something untoward has happened and the House of Windsor is covering it up. That we now know, a picture of the late Queen with her great-grandchildren was also edited, hasn't exactly helped. Yet a Sky News poll shows that, in the UK at least, trust in the couple has not fallen significantly. Most people think she's revealed enough information about her medical problems, though plenty have heard the rumours and ill-informed speculation. A little later, I'll be speaking to a former Director of Communications for Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, but let's begin with our Royal Correspondent, Rhiannon Mills, out and about in Sheffield today following Prince William. Rhiannon, good to see you. Now that we have this video of Kate in the wild, as it were, presumably that's it. The story finishes and all the speculation ceases. I wish it would die down, but I can't see it, to be honest. The rabbit hole that has opened up on social media is so deep and so vast. And to be honest, I think people are quite enjoying all of the, the chatter, the conspiracy theories around all of this. What I find fascinating is there was a huge amount of excitement when we first saw this video and I wasn't terribly excited about it. And I do think there is this correlation between how excited you are about seeing her walking, carrying a shopping bag and how deep you've gone into these conspiracy theories. There clearly are people out there who have thought the worst, basically. From all of the conversations that I've been having, I was constantly being told, look, Yes, she's had major surgery, but she is recovering well. So the fact that we've seen her out and about walking did not necessarily come as such a, a huge surprise to me as potentially it did to some other people. Didn't Kensington Palace say to the public, not just to royal correspondents like you, but to the public, she's going to have major surgery, she's then going to recuperate, you're not going to see her until April, don't worry about it. I mean, they, they did say that, didn't they? They basically have stuck very firmly to that line. Back in January, they said, look, she's gone in for this major abdominal surgery. She's going to be in hospital for 10 days to two weeks. And then after that, it's going to be two to three months until we potentially see her again. That then takes us to after Easter. I'm not sure that everything's going to die down in terms of the speculation about her, unfortunately. Did Kensington Palace not see this this situation coming, that if they were to engage with the conspiracy theorists, some of them, frankly, if Catherine approached them in the fresh produce aisle at their local supermarket to say hello, they would not believe that that was Kate herself. It's inevitable, really, isn't it, that people decide to try and fill that, that vacuum, and that has certainly been topped up and topped up and topped up with various conspiracy theories. Prince William, all along was never going to be bounced into saying or doing anything that he didn't want to. He, I'm told, is deeply frustrated by the situation that we have at the moment. In essence, I'm told he just wants it to stop. He wants it to go away. But while the palace historically over the years have managed to build up relationships with what's described as the Royal Press Pack, so whether that's broadcasters or whether it's the newspapers, and maybe been able to have a quiet word and say, look, can we kind of give them a bit of space, give them some privacy? I think all we've seen with this one is that um, they can't control social media. They just can't do it. It's that Pandora's box and they're not going to close it. And also, in terms of that video as well, how do you control members of the public when, look, we've all got a mobile phone, and, um, and so, yeah, the, the opportunity sprung up for one member of the public on, on the weekend and they were able to film Kate out and about. They're not able to control members of the public taking videos or taking pictures on their phones and sharing the material, you know, through social media. 
but presumably the palace is able to phone up the editor of the Sun newspaper and say, we would rather you didn't run that piece of video. I think what happened is there were probably reminders of how the Princess of Wales has a reasonable expectation of privacy, that they had hoped that she would have a decent amount of time for rest and recuperation. But in the end, I suspect with the son probably paying a huge amount of money, I wouldn't even like to guess how much money they paid for that video, but I think they probably balanced things up and thought, do you know what? The Mother's Day picture being photoshopped was a total disaster. And this is, if you like, sign of life. Obviously, in the aftermath of what happened to Princess Diana, we there is this deal done. Like that's their private time. They love spending time in Windsor. They're often seen out and about with the kids. Pictures are taken, but they're not run. But I think the public interest has been so huge in terms of what's happening with Kate. We've all decided to go with it. The publication of this video and stills from it and the lack of a pushback from the royal family doesn't just raise the likelihood that people will continue to take more of that uh, sort of footage and indeed that the press and per broadcasters will run it in future. It's a difficult balance at the moment and I think anyone within the palace who does that kind of giving us some background and all that kind of stuff, they are very conscious that anything they say can potentially end up as a headline. So I think they're trying to stick to the facts, but they are really conscious of the fact that they have set this time frame of Easter and they know that probably as soon as we get past Easter Sunday, the clock is ticking and people are going to start asking when we're going to see her. And look, I would be fascinated to know kind of what the, the strategy is and the conversations that are going on about how they decide what engagement she does first or how do they decide what pictures they put out in the coming weeks. Look, the poll that we did showed that it's mainly 18 to 49 year olds who are listening to all the different theories and talking about it, which to me would point to the fact that they're looking on social media. And that's really where the story kind of continues to percolate and, and persist, really. And that's what I think is so tricky. You've been out and about in Sheffield today uh, following William. I mean, how's he been received there? It's, it's anecdotal, it's not empirical, but it's always useful to take the temperature when they go out on public events like this at times like these. When you look at the poll, and I think this will be very welcome for Prince William, who kind of wants to maintain his privacy and feels he's doing the right thing. The polling basically shows that most people, they trusted William and Kate before all of this and they continue to, to trust them now. Yes, people would like to know a little bit more about what's going on with Kate. What he's been focusing on today in Sheffield is um, this homelessness project that he launched last year called Homewoods. And I think a lot of what the royal family does is all about convening people. And in the end, that is where they build their credibility. Some people have said that the photo shopping, kind of they thought it was a bit weird. But I would say that largely people are, are happy for them to just kind of get on with it now. Are you in any way surprised by the data that's emerged from the polling? I thought the photo would impact how people felt about them more. I was quite shocked to think that the picture had been put out there and had been, been manipulated and changed. With William and Kate, they are well liked. They rarely put a foot wrong. And also, I think what's, what you have to remember, especially with the Princess of Wales, and this I think you can see in, in a lot of the newspaper coverage, is she sells newspapers like No Tomorrow. And so the newspapers are desperate to get her back. Do you think that this incident will provoke a sea change in the way in which they handle the press? Or are we going to see them retreating inwards? I think they realise that they can't retreat in a way that, that most of us would want to. And, and today was another one of those very telling days um, where look, he puts his game face on and, and he just gets on with it. I was talking to, to Tessie Ojo from the Diana Award um, the other day, she's worked with him for about 24 years now and said every time that there's been some kind of scandal or noise around the royal family, it's always extraordinary to see how they literally turn up. It's that sense of duty, service, right, I'm here to, to help you to promote whatever cause or charity it is, and, and they, they just get on with it. What I always find fascinating 
in these moments is there's often a lot of discussion about the communications team at the palace and what exactly are they going, what are they doing and how have they failed. But I think they're always in a really tricky position because they can advise upwards but ultimately, in the end, it's those up top. It's the members of the royal family up top who will make the final decision on the strategy that they are going to follow. Ultimately, it's going to be up to, to Prince William when it comes to, to Princess Catherine and, and what's going to be said or not said in that kind of area. And, of course, it'll be up to the king to decide whether or not he shares any more about his cancer diagnosis. Um, but they all know that the levels of interest are incredibly high at the moment. Um, it's whether or not they decide to, to feed that interest, which will be particularly interesting as we move through the next weeks and months. Rhiannon, thank you. Stay right where you are. When we come back, we'll be looking in more depth at the Windsor media strategy uh, with someone who actually worked for the late Queen. Back soon. We're not quite at Annis Horribilis levels, but the past couple of weeks have been bruising for the royal family. The question is how much of the situation they have brought upon themselves and how much is just an inevitable consequence of being part of a regal dynasty stretching back centuries that is attempting to adapt itself to life in the 21st century. Simon Lewis was Director of Communications to the late Queen. He now co-hosts the When It Hits The Fan podcast. Let's rewind, if we can, and start with... That Mother's Day photo, edited, of course, uh, by Catherine. Was that the the start point for all of this conspiracy theorising that we've seen of late? Or or, or was it perhaps just just a catalyst, that there were already people speculating about Catherine and William and that this just merely fuelled the fires? Well, I think we should actually go back even further. I think the two statements, one from Kensington Palace, one from Buckingham Palace, about the respective health of the princess and the king, we should go back to those. The, the, the statement from Buckingham Palace about the king's health was, I think, a fuller statement than I've ever seen about a member of the royal family, and quite right too, because he's the king, he's the head of state, and people needed to know whether he was going to be seen, how he was going to be seen, and that was a very full statement. The statement about the princess of Wales was factually pretty good. It explained exactly when she was likely to come back into the public eye. They talked a bit about her health, but not as much as they needed to with the king. So I felt... <laughs> on that day, those were two robust statements. Of course, the challenge is, as time goes on, you get something of a vacuum. Uh, And I suspect the advisors in Kensington Palace were quite keen to do something about that. And that was, I think, the trigger point, which again is understandable. I think it started from a good place, which was let's try and get something out that just caps some of the speculation. So talk to me just a little bit then about where you identify the failings in this media strategy, because I I, I will admit that I'm slightly struggling when it comes to Catherine, because they said that there was surgery to take place. They said that she would be out of the public eye until Uh sometime in April. So it transpired, and yet there, there is no way of filling that absence in the public sphere apart from continuing to feed the beast by providing more detail. If the atmosphere had been a little different, generally, I think people would have looked at that photograph quickly and thought, what a lovely photograph. The kids look fantastic in it. They look so relaxed. But because of the more frenzied atmosphere, I think the photograph probably needed a little bit more thought in terms of how it was communicated. And I have to say as well, I do think the statement that the princess made afterwards was also the right thing to do. I mean, very easy in a situation like that to blame other people, isn't it? But actually, she, she took full responsibility for it. So I kind of feel that there's a lot of noise around this. But in reality, we're still where we are, that we are waiting and hoping to see the princess back in action on the timetable that the statement laid out. So if, if we park the, the, the Mother's Day photo just for a second, what should the palace have done instead as regards the speculation around Catherine? How best to firefight something like that? Because... But by my reckoning, every time there has been an intervention in PR terms by the royals, it hasn't had the the desired effect, has it? Well, I think the problem with commenting incessantly on speculation is that you're never going to win that. (laughs) And I do think that the thing about speculation is sometimes you just need to let it settle. And what I would hope, and I've got no idea whether when it can happen, is that at some stage relatively soon there may be another image of the princess and maybe, as, as one of the papers reported over the weekend, an opportunity for her to say something publicly. But I don't think 
you need to rush it. I also really don't think that responding to speculation, particularly going back to your survey and the kind of conspiracy theories, helps at all. Because what do you comment on and what don't you comment on? And of course, the other point is there's a very important personal element. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're the king or the princess of Wales. I do genuinely think that you're entitled to a degree of privacy. And I think most people in this country believe that as well. So you've got to get that balance right as part of the equation. So, so where would you have, have drawn the line, obviously, given your experience of working with the Queen? Where do you draw the line? I think that's the point I'm trying to make, that these things are never static. So I, th- I, th- I do think <laughs> the visibility of the royal family, individual members of the royal family, matters a lot to people. But so does people getting better in their health. So this is the the constant balance. So that's what I do feel about this, that the British people who are very sensible about these things, I think at heart, understand the dilemma here. And it's the very popularity, actually, the Princess of Wales that makes this a bigger issue because she is so popular and people are willing her to return to health that I think almost kind of creates an additional expectation. I've always said, I've always thought that those who, who, who claim that the House of Windsor's PR strategy can be summed up in those four words, never complain, never explain, I, I do think that is doing a disservice. But from your perspective, the strategy as currently employed by those around William, Catherine, Charles, is it fit for purpose in the age of, of social media? I actually do think that the never complain, never explain strategy, I think it's accredited to the first press office in the Buckingham Palace in the 1950s, has changed fundamentally. I really do. I mean, even since my time, which obviously was the, an age in the 1990s of just the newspaper, essentially, you, you can't. You can't do that. I mean, it's just not feasible. So just look at the amount of coverage there is on social media that comes out of the palace about the royal family. Look at the information we're given. I I do think that strategy has been adapted quite significantly. But the issue we're talking about is is, is an eye of the storm. And, And I think what we're trying to work out, and I know my view on this, is whether this is a kind of conspiracy or a some sort of cock-up. And I, I genuinely think that photograph was an honest mistake. And I do think that Catherine's comment was the right thing to say. And I know I don't want to diminish the concerns that people may have, but I do think that it's really important that people go back to the facts whenever possible. Otherwise, these conspiracy theories just become uncontrollable and, and completely unproductive. Let's talk then about the Mother's Day photo and indeed, of course, that we've heard from Getty Images today that a photo of the Queen with her grandchildren was also uh, manipulated to an extent. I mean, first and foremost, should any image emerging from the royal family have been edited and passed on without that information being made clear? And second, should should the royal family be editing any of their images in the first place? I, I think probably with the benefit of hindsight, an official photographer taking a photograph, there would have been no question at all. He was well, that's an official photograph. But I personally quite like the fact that it was a family photograph. It's just, as I say, because we're in this particular fevered period, it's become something much more than for most people it really is. Is there perhaps an element of live by the sword, die by the sword here? We know that William and Kate have been very much more active on social media than other members of the royal family, possibly only with the exception of of, of Harry and Meghan, frankly. And when you engage in that space, in that fashion, don't you have to play by the rules of that place? Well, I think I think it's what I describe as a Faustian bargain. and I think every single member of the royal family is very aware that the royal family must be visible and must be visible in a way that is contemporary. And I, I do think... The use of social media by the members of the royal family has been absolutely spot on. But you, you, you can't turn it on and you can't turn it off. But you can be measured. I mean, I always think, you know, it's not about campaigns. It's not about issues. It's about long term communication of what the institution stands for and what work the members of the royal family are doing. And I do think that requires a different type of communication and also requires a different way of thinking about how stories unfold. On that basis, then, how damaging? has all this been? Well, I think the first thing to say is your own poll does say trust in the royals is undented. And I've always believed that what people feel about the royal family is a deeply held belief. The second point is I I, I think, I mean, there haven't been many accessions in history. I think the accession from the late Queen to the King went as well as could be possibly expected. And I do think the King's first year has been outstanding in so many different ways. So it's just disappointing that he has this ill health now. But I genuinely, genuinely think if we'd look back a year or so and said what might happen during this year, might there have been sort of some uncertainties, might people have had to get used to the new monarch? No, I, I, think, I think it has been, for all sorts of reasons, a very, very strong start to his reign. 
Okay then, Simon, what would be the Lewis media management strategy for the next fortnight, for William, Catherine, and of course for Charles himself? So I, I think the thing that people don't like about any institution is when things look as though they're kind of manufactured or put together very quickly. I think one of the core virtues of the monarchy is that sense of things are carefully thought through, they're in it for the long run. So I personally, if I was back in Buckingham Palace, would be, I'm sure, working with colleagues to think how we can sort of move forward from this without making it look as though there's something that's been rushed. Simon, thank you. Of course, the royals have always had to be somewhat mindful of how they are perceived by the public. Back in the day, you got it wrong and you'd end up in the tower or your head on a spike outside it. Today, while well, the risk of a Cromwellian short back and sides is much reduced, but the point remains. In an age where information flows around the world in real time, there perhaps needs to be a much speedier response. Or, as we've seen, speculation fills the vacuum that the silence has created. That's your lot for today. We'll see you next time.